Uh, yeah, I'll come out and meet you. Um, sorry, guys. We are now joined by James Hudson. James Hudson. A couple minutes early, but uh, let's rock and roll. If you've got questions, feel free to throw them at them. Uh, <clears throat> James, here is Mateus Ornelas from Time Out here in Brazil. Uh, congratulations for going for the, the NFL draft. Uh, a lot of scouts talk about your maybe have to switch for the right tackle or other position on the offensive line, maybe in the first year for develop some experience in the NFL. How you are working on it or how do you think that this transition is going to work for you? Uh, I think it's going to work out well for me. Uh, I really... I I really been, you know, been working on a lot of stuff while I was training and everything, uh, communicating with with different people and just learning different stuff. And I think that the pro that the everything is going to work out for me. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen, like depending on the team that I go to, what my situation is going to be. But um, I'm willing to do whatever. If I have to, you know, go in and, and sit behind somebody who who's a vet, who's a vet, and been there for a long time and knows what he's talking about. I'm going to go do that, try to soak up as much information that I can and learn as much as I can from them so that when my jersey's called, I'll be ready. So, And just a quick follow-up, if I can. Uh, you just sit and talk about veterans on the NFL. Have some player that you see like a model or follow or some former player that you really like to watch some tape? Um, I like to watch um, – As far as like guys who's in the league right now, uh, I, I love to watch David Bautiari, uh, who's somebody who I watch a lot um, for the simple fact that he's, you know, he he has a very similar body type to me and a very similar play style. So uh, I try to watch guys who who I'm similar to. And David, I mean, I feel like he he's probably like the best, the best tackle in the league. So that's another reason why I watch him. But I, I watch guys like, you know, Trent Williams, uh, Laramie Tunsil. Um, the list can go on. I, I watch a bunch of different guys, but David Bautiari is probably who I who I model my game after and, and who I watch the most. Thank you. Good luck during the process. Thank you, James. How uh, how much confidence did you get going to the Senior Bowl and, and performing like you did, uh, and and kind of putting your name on the map? Did you walk out of there feeling like you improved your stock how you wanted to and and took the most advantage of the opportunity? Definitely. Uh, that was my whole goal, going to the Senior Bowl. Um, that's exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, I felt like before I got there, not too many people knew about me. I uh, felt like I was being slept on. I felt like I had everything to, to go there and prove and just play with a chip on my shoulder. And that's exactly what I did. I was fortunate and blessed to have, you know, three really good days of practice, had a really good game, um, and just – Everything, everything started to fall into place. And uh, now a lot of people know exactly who James Hudson III is. James, you obviously had a pretty uh, wild and well-documented path throughout your college career. How much has that come up during the interview process with NFL teams? <laughs> uh, it comes up probably every time that I do an interview with the team. Uh, I'm pretty sure that I've explained that whole entire situation to 30, to all 32 clubs. Uh, I mean, people, that's, that's the main thing that people want to know. I mean, people like want to know what happened, why did I choose to leave? Um, if there's any bad blood or anything like that. So uh, it comes up pretty often. What are you looking to show tomorrow, Pro Day? Uh, any specific, you know, one of the the drills or, or you know, whatever, uh, the lifting? Is there anything you think can really separate you from the pack? Uh, nothing really Nothing really specific. I feel like my position drills is something that's going to be really important for me. Um, just to get out there and show people that, you know, I can't anchor, uh, have a – I could I – can, play with, with great athleticism and, and still be able to, you know, be able to move people and stuff like that. So I just want to get out there and just show everybody what I can do. Uh, nothing really specific. Uh, just come, just come and watch, you know, James Hudson put on a show. 
Will you be just focusing on tackle, or do you want to show teams if, if they need you can play inside, or have you thought about that part of it yet? Um, if I if I got asked to do some guard stuff, I wouldn't I wouldn't hesitate to do it at all. Um, but mainly people have been, you know, saying saying tackle, so I'm pretty sure it'd be all tackle stuff. But if I got asked to do some guard stuff, I would do it uh, with no question. James, there's so much inter, uh, information on the internet. You know, I see Mel Kuyper's got you rated eighth in offensive tackles. I've seen you go in the fourth round of the Vikings. I mean, how has it been trying to – do you want to indulge in seeing what's out there and what people are saying, or do you try to stay away from it? Uh, I try to stay away from it because, you know, everybody can have an opinion, but nobody has a pick in a draft uh, besides, you know, the, the people who are part of the organizations. Um, I try not to pay that, pay much attention to that stuff. I mean, of course I see it, but uh, I just try not to pay it on mine really. And just, just keep, keep my head down and just keep working and, and get ready for, for April 29th. James, we haven't talked to you since the the Peach Bowl. I know that was probably a, a tough moment for you. What did you learn from from that experience, and how has that helped you since then? Um, well, definitely, um, I learned a lot because uh, I mean it didn't end how I wanted it to. But um, you know, I just taught my told myself, you know, you gotta be gotta be smarter. Uh, gotta gotta play with controlled aggressiveness and uh, can't let your emotions get the best of you. Um, it's unfortunate what happened, uh, but, you know, I'm past it now, and it's something that it probably will never happen again. So uh, um, I, I hate that it happened, but, you know, I, I'm still happy about where, where, I, where I'm at and where I'm headed. Hey, James, when you were forced to sit out in 2019, how did you spend that year? You still got to practice with the team, right? And just how did you kind of handle that mentally, knowing that, that you couldn't play in that year? Yeah, so um, it was tough. Some days were tougher than others, but um, really, what what was big for me was 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 Coach Fickle. Uh, I really relied on Coach Fickle throughout that entire year. Um, I was on scout team, you know, giving the defensive line looks and everything week in and week out. But Coach Fickle would emphasize to me every, pretty much every day that uh, you know I had a a real important role in this team and that the defensive line wasn't going to get better unless, you know, I came to practice with the right attitude, doing what I was supposed to do and giving them the right looks, they, they wouldn't get better. And he will always tell me, you know, that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, I, I knew that I was going to be able to play in the bowl game and, and at the end of that season. And he would tell me, you know, you, you're getting ready for that. You should, you should want to go out there and, and show everybody what they were missing and just – have one of the best games that you've had of your life. So that's exactly what I did. I just put my head down every day, took it day by day um, to get better, find different things to work on, and just uh, I let it fly when, when it was my time. If I could just follow up, have you met with the Pittsburgh Steelers? And if so, who have you talked to? Uh, yes, I have. Uh, talked to some to a few people on their staff. Um, I believe I talked to their, to their offensive coordinator, their offensive line coach. Uh, a bunch of people, you know, they're, they're, they're player person, player development people, uh, pretty much, pretty much everybody. So was that on a, a zoom call or at the senior bowl or, or both? Well, I, I talked with some at the, at the senior bowl, but I've also done zoom calls too. Okay, great. Thank you, James. Yeah. James, there's been a bunch of guys around practice from, you know, last year and the year before the past couple of days with Pro Day coming up. Coach Fick talked the other day about, you know, they wanted to create this family atmosphere, for lack of a better term, where guys could feel like they were part of the program, could come back. Do you sense that and feel a part of that? Definitely, definitely. Uh, just being out there on Saturday, you know, seeing my seeing my, my guys just out there working, I mean, I, it felt bittersweet. I mean, I, I wish I could be out there with them still, but um, I, I, I'm I'm glad that I that I have like that feeling that I know that I could come back here whenever and just you know just be around. At least early, it looks like John Williams might be uh, next in line at left tackle. What can you uh, can you tell us about the young fella? Um, he's a hard worker. Um, 
he knows that, you know, he has a lot to work on, has a lot to improve, but he comes with the right attitude every day to practice to get better. And you can't ask for much more than that. Uh, he's very coachable. Um, he's very athletic uh, like me. So um, I, I see I see John doing great things in the future. Do you see similarities to, to his game and yours outside of just the athleticism or you think there's more? Definitely, definitely. I feel like he's he's very aggressive. He has a really strong punch as well. Um, he's very light on his feet. Um, he he can do a lot. Uh, it's just you know he he was a freshman this past year, so he has some a lot of stuff to improve on and, and get better at. But it's only going to get better. It's not going to get worse at all. James, have you talked to the Bengals? And from playing at UC, how familiar have you been with kind of the struggles they've had up front the last few years? Um, uh, I'm, I'm very familiar with it. Um, I've talked to the, to the Bengals, um, a little bit. I've talked, talked to them at the senior bowl, but I don't think I've, I don't think I've done a, a zoom call with them yet, but, uh, talked to them at the senior bowl. Um, we did a follow-up meeting after the, after all the formal interviews were done and stuff, we did a follow-up meeting on the, the Friday before the game and, you know, it, 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 it went pretty well. Um, I'm I'm aware of you know their offensive line struggles, but I mean if I was to end up in Cincinnati being a be after being a Bearcat um, and ending up a Bengal, it would, it would be it would be great. Uh, that would be I mean I I don't know I don't know how to put it into words, but it would it would be something crazy. Uh, just being an Ohio kid and ending up in on an Ohio professional team would be a dream come true. Being from the Toledo area, you kind of got the Lions nearby. You've got NFL teams in your state. Did you have a, uh, a specific team that, that, you know, you loved as a kid? Uh, so I grew up a Minnesota Vikings fan, which is, is kind of different, uh, especially being from Toledo, Ohio. It's usually, you know, Browns, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, Dallas Cowboys. It's a bunch of Dallas Cowboys fans in my city. Um, a bunch of Detroit Lions fans, but I mean, I don't know. I just want it to be different and just, you know, have a have a different favorite team. Um, and that's why I started liking the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, I watched a lot of Adrian Peterson growing up, um, watched a whole bunch of Randy Moss, uh, Dante Culpepper. So, I mean, it, it just made sense to me. James, you've uh... – Half a dozen Bearcat basketball players have entered the transfer portal. It seems to be an epidemic around basketball because they're allowed to now with the new COVID rules. Mm -hmm. What kind of counsel would you give fellow Bearcats or anyone <clears throat> with your experience having gone through the transfer situation? Um, I feel like everybody's – it really depends on, on your situation. I feel like everybody's, you know, transfer situation is different. Um, like – the players on the on the basketball team are is going to have a much different situation than what I had. Um, it, it it's really hard to say because you don't really you don't really know. Like I mean, some people some people might put their name into the transfer portal thinking that they're going to get a certain school, and that school may not reach out. So um, really, the advice that I could give is just you know explore your options uh, when you do decide on a school, make sure that it's somewhere that you really want to be somewhere where you feel like is that is home. Um, and somewhere that you, that you know, that you could achieve your goals at. Did you accomplish all those things with your transfer to Cincinnati? Definitely. Uh, I feel like, I feel like this is probably the best decision I made in my life. get a chance to chop it up with Mike a little bit over the past couple of days with both of you being in town. Yeah. So um, me and Mike, man, you know that that's like my brother. So uh, me and him, we, we talk all the time. Um, even while I was in California, we would talk almost every day, you know, just to, just to, just to catch up on stuff and, you know, just, just talk about the process. Uh, we joke around about where I'm going to end up, stuff like that. Um, how cool it would be if we ended up on the same team. Just it's a bunch of stuff that we talk about, man, with, with this process and just, you know, how crazy it's been.
Anything else for James? All right. Thank you, James. Best of luck tomorrow. Yeah, Thanks, James. James. Thanks, James. Thank you. Thanks, James. No problem. All right, guys, we're now joined by uh, defensive back Derek Forrest. Go ahead with your questions when you're ready. Uh, Derek, here is Mateus from Time Out here in Brazil. Uh, congratulations for going for the, the NFL draft. Uh, a lot of scouts talk about how uh, versatile you are on the secondary. And 2019, you have a, a season with plus 100 tackles. How do you think that these numbers can help you during this process? They can see you're a guy that in the secondary, but you can tackle, you can tackle a lot. How do you think that all, that, all, all these numbers help you during this process and how do you think that that the nfl see you in the next level gotcha uh, first of all i'll say uh thank you but um i would say uh these numbers are going to help me because um we don't have the combine this year so that's a thing that can be a disadvantage for guys like me who um who didn't have uh great numbers this year but in my in my past years i've had tremendous numbers so um i feel like those numbers are going to help me going into the draft because uh, the film, it, it shows, and it shows that I'm a guy that's going to be consistent. I'm a guy that's a, a great tackler. Um, I have ball skills. So I feel like this is going to help me in the league. And uh, in the next level, I see coaches wanting me to play uh, more uh, nickel spots and, uh, you know, box safety and even in the post. Thank you. Good luck during the process. Thank you. Derek, you were one of fix first recruits here, and it seemed like kind of being underrated and, and the development over the course of your college career has, has been a big part of that story. Do you feel like that's the same situation now headed into the draft for you? Uh, absolutely. I feel like that's the situation. Um, I feel like um, a lot of teams um, haven't heard about me just because uh, my name isn't out there as much as uh, a lot of different guys in the draft. But um, I feel like I'm a guy that's definitely going to show how hard I've been working tomorrow and um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to show up and I'm going to pay off. Derek, how important is, is special teams for you in this process to show teams you can you can compete on any special team and, and you've done it here and that's you know something that not only helped you get on the field but something you did all four years. Uh, that's something that I'm going to use as an advantage for me because um, I'm a guy that's not afraid to play special teams and I actually love special teams so um, I'm going to use that to my advantage and uh, I'm going to show teams that uh, I can be a resource to them on special teams and that. Hopefully, I mean, hopefully that will help me um, get a roster spot.
Derek, I realize the Ohio State game from 2019 isn't necessarily a fond memory, but you played really well in that game. Is that something that's come up at all, or do you feel like something that team, NFL teams are going to look at as the way you played against a, a really high-caliber opponent? Uh, I do believe that um, teams are going to look at that, and um, they're going to realize that I'm a guy that has a high motor. Um, a lot of different games, such as the Georgia game, um, I play all over the field, so – Games like those big games can they show my skill set and um, they show I can play with the top level guys. Derek, the a, uh, Zach Taylor of the Bengals has there are so many captains on his team. You know, last year they drafted three guys that were captains. They just signed Ricardo Allen, who was a four time captain with the Falcons. Uh, how much of an advantage or a plus in your favor going into the draft do you think your captaincy will be? I feel like um, a lot of different NFL coaches, they love that because um, it's a quality trait and um, it's a it's a characteristic. So um, a lot of teams see that I'm a, I'm a guy that's going to be a leader. And um, a lot of teams need that, especially coming off of COVID years because uh, you can't really do too much. Uh, there's no preseason, so – if you can bring in guys that are leaders, I feel like it it helped the locker room. Derek, are there any specific things you can point to that you feel like your career at Cincinnati or your just experience at Cincinnati has helped prepare you for the next level? Yes, I would say um, one. I graduated, so um, I feel like off the field, Cincinnati has prepared me to be a man and a. Uh, and prepare me to be successful off the field. Um, another thing I will say is um, they prepare me to be a guy that's going to have a high character. You know, I'm going to go out there and I'm, I'm going to be my best. Um, I have I have good characteristics. Um, and I just feel like Cincinnati has prepared me to be the best that I can be, especially moving forward, going towards the league. Derek, you played here about what, an hour and a half from your home in Columbus. Uh, I saw your dad pretty much every game. Uh, how cool was that experience for you to, to really get to go through these past four years with your dad there and your brothers and, you know, everybody kind of being able to watch and, and enjoy this thing with you? Uh, it was very cool. Uh, it was one of my main motivating factors because um, my family, they're everything to me. And um, they've kept me going throughout the years. If, if I needed them, they were there for me to lean on them. So I feel like uh, just having my family at those games, it motivated me a little bit more than uh, other guys maybe. Derek, you and James are, are really tight. Um, <clears throat> I see you going around the same area in a lot of these mock drafts. How much friendly competition, uh, how much you guys – uh, how much will you be together on, on draft day and seeing who goes where and who might go higher? So we, we won't be together on draft day, but um, he's definitely going, we're, we're definitely going to be in contact, but uh, it's been a, a good competition. We actually train at the same place uh, for preparing for the draft. So it's been a lot of competition going on uh, and we're going to go out there and put on the show tomorrow. <laughs> Any other questions for Derek? All right, thank you, Derek, and best of luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve.
James Wiggins will be closing us out here in a few minutes. He's on his way.